What's going on guys? Blazing Tech here. Today we're going to be talking about my experiences as both a buyer and a seller using three different places. One being eBay, two being Facebook Marketplace, and three being Craigslist. Again, all results may vary and all opinions may be different. These are just my personal opinions on recollections of transactions that have happened in the past and this is all factual. So, without any further ado, let's get started. Let's kick this video off starting with eBay. And let's talk about eBay from a seller's perspective and let's begin with the pros. Pro number one is that you have eBay as an infrastructure, as a safety net. You pay into it, and I'll talk about that in the cons, but if you have a problem with a buyer, maybe they're saying that they don't receive the item or something of that nature, eBay will usually have your back if you have very high feedback, and that's something that I'll talk about later. If you have high feedback and you uh, describe your item correctly and accurately, 100%, eBay will 99% side with the seller. As long as that item description is accurate, you're going to be fine. And as a pro of eBay, as long as you have good standing, is, which means if you sell things and all of your transactions go smoothly, you will have a high feedback rating. And those go from 0 to 100. And that is pretty great to me because other outlets, if you do something wrong, you could be in trouble. Another pro of eBay to me is that you don't necessarily have to deal with your buyer. They place bids or they hit buy it now, you get their address, you don't have to talk to them, you ship out their item, they receive the item, they leave you back feedback and that's the end of that. It's not a troublesome process, it's not a stressful process, it's literally just somebody sees an item, they bid on it, they buy it you send it out. If you both do everything you're supposed to do, 99% of the time you're going to get feedback. The most stressful thing that a buyer can do to a seller on eBay is not pay. If they've won the auction, they have to pay. But if they don't pay, that can be a little bit stressful. You may have to relist your item. But trust me, that is a drop in the bucket compared to some of the stresses that other places can give you. Cons of eBay for me would be Number one, dealing with the post office. If you've never dealt with the post office before, that can be kind of a troublesome yet and stressful situation at the same time. But as you go on, you're going to learn the tricks and the trades of the USPS, and you'll probably get good at it. But when I was starting out, using the post office was definitely stressful. I'd recommend getting some good packaging tape and kind of have an array of different boxes. What I like to do personally is if I have an item and I don't have a box for it, just peruse your local Dollar Tree. You can get the item for a dollar, you have the box, and pretty much if you tape up a box very well, even if it's a flimsy box, it's gonna be okay. Just package up your item properly and you'll be fine. But that is definitely a con using shipping and using the USPS. Another con is that eBay takes two different cuts from whatever you sell. So you have eBay fees and what are called PayPal fees. And they take a little percentage of your item. Obviously, they don't hit you with both of them at the end of the month. PayPal fees are first and those are small, but at the end of the month, eBay will hit you with their eBay fees so you don't feel it twice. And in my opinion, that is a great con because they're not upfront with the seller and they probably are, but it's embedded deep within a contractual agreement. But you don't feel it because they don't hit you at the same time. I believe if they hit sellers at the same time, there wouldn't be that many sellers on eBay. And within those two cons comes the biggest con of them all. And that is that whatever you sell on eBay, you have to consider not only shipping, but the two cuts that eBay and PayPal will be taking. And buyers do not consider those three cuts that a seller has to consider. So you're not going to net the greatest profit using eBay, but there is set in place infrastructure that will guarantee that you will get your money and it will be real money and that the seller gets their product. So there's a lot of peace of mind both ways and you kind of have to buy into that. But to me, those are three cons that kind of eliminate certain 
things for me to sell on eBay, I would rather sell them on the next places that we're going to talk about in the video. As a seller, my favorite place to sell my items are on Facebook Marketplace. Now let's talk about the pros. Pro number one would be that there is a lot of accountability when compared to other places such as Craigslist or OfferUp. Because you see their profile, you see their family photos, you see everything, you can kind of judge whether the person is going to be you know, honest or trustworthy. I know this is bad to say, judge a book by its cover, but you can tell a lot of about a person that you're trying to sell something to based on their profile. And that's usually how I gauge whether to meet somebody in the day or the night, whether to meet them at a location that they choose or a public location that I choose. And usually a lot of my deals occur in Walgreens parking lots. I like to park somewhere where I can definitely see the camera. I like to arrive there early. That way, nothing can really go wrong on my end other than some goods. And ultimately, you have to realize that if it's something that's only worth $40 and you're held at gunpoint for it, I would rather give them that item and be in a public place than be dead somewhere that isn't a public place. But that is definitely a pro, is that you can judge those situations, you can gauge those situations yourself based on seeing their profile. Number two would be that when interacting with a buyer, there is a neat function within Facebook Messenger that allows all of the conversations to be translated to whatever language you need it to be translated to from whatever language that it's coming from. So that eliminates kind of a language barrier from somebody that doesn't speak the same language as you. Another pro would be that there are a lot of powerful tools that Facebook Marketplace uses, such as analytics. So you can see how many views your item is getting, and based on those views, you can adjust the price accordingly, obviously. Cons with Facebook Marketplace for me is that you still have to interact with people, which in eBay, you don't have to interact with buyers, potential buyers. And potential buyers can be very stressful. You deal with what are called tire kickers, penny pinchers, cheapskates, bargainers. They really want the best bargain and they're really going to kind of haggle you for the price. So obviously you have to price things accordingly. But in my opinion, that is better than getting hit with those three fees that we talked about in eBay being shipping, eBay fees, and PayPal fees. You can tell somebody to meet very close to your house, meet them up there, but it is very stressful, I will tell you, to deal with the general population when they ask you questions that you outline in the description or just crazy things like that or they ask you where you're located and then they don't know you're located where you are. They say, oh, I thought you were here. So there's a lot of stress that goes into contacting the buyers when you have to have those conversations with the buyers. But it is worth it for those pros that I outlined. Another con would definitely be that these people can see your profile. So you kind of have to judge that for yourself. Obviously, I don't post things that would, you know, disclose my location at any point in time. But that is definitely something that you would have to keep an eye out on for sure. The next place that we're going to talk about is Craigslist. Let's talk about the pros from Craigslist. The pros would only be, in my opinion, that you don't get those big three cuts that eBay takes, but also there's a lot of people on Craigslist that are diehard Craigslist people, so that's definitely something. I believe that Facebook has a bigger, excuse me, I believe that Craigslist has a stronger following than Facebook Marketplace at this point in time, December 29th, 2018. I'm sure that is subject to change in the future, but Craigslist has a bigger market than Facebook. So you're more apt to sell maybe things that aren't going on Facebook, on Craigslist, but some cons about Craigslist are that you have to have your mobile phone number on there, then you have to text these people, and you don't have that accountability that you do in Facebook because you can't see their profile, and they're apt to be flaky people. Definitely, I've dealt with some people on Craigslist that are flaky, where you go and meet in the location with your item, and then those people just are never to be heard from again. And that is definitely aggravating because not only are you wasting gas, but you're wasting your time. And to me, that has happened far less than Facebook Marketplace, although it has happened definitely on Facebook Marketplace. As a seller, I hope you enjoyed my insight on that. If you're looking to sell something, for example, 
maybe a guitar or something like that, something that's difficult to ship, I would definitely try my luck on Facebook and Craigslist first, and then go to eBay. If it's something like a regular regular guitar, I would definitely go that route. If it's something that's very collectible, a very collectible item, a very sought after item, let's say action figures or comic books, that's something of a niche item that I would definitely say is worth. It's worth it to sell it on eBay because you're probably not going to be able to sell it on Facebook or Craigslist. So, to kick off the second part of this video, we're going to be talking about all this in the perspective of a buyer. A buyer, I would definitely, definitely side with eBay because you're going to get a good deal no matter what. You don't have to pay eBay or PayPal fees. You just have to pay the seller in, in PayPal. But eBay, and it's unfortunate, eBay more than likely sides with the buyer if there is an issue. So if there's an issue with an item, if it was misdescribed, you can usually get your money back and all you'd have to do is do the return shipping there. If you're looking for something specific and you don't want to take any chances, any risks, as a buyer, that's where I would shop on eBay. If you're like me and you're looking for a deal, looking for a bargain, looking for a come up, I would definitely go with Facebook Marketplace. There's all that accountability that I talked about as a seller earlier on in the video. And Facebook to me is just a powerful place. You can use a map to see to vary locations and stuff like that to see that way you don't have to drive far away. But also Facebook Marketplace is kind of an untapped gold mine in my opinion at this point in time. You can find a deal on there and you could come up on something that you definitely need. Maybe something that you can flip and we can do another video about flipping, but I personally like to shop for different items on Facebook Marketplace. And my least favorite as a buyer would be, um, excuse me, would be Craigslist. Craigslist is kind of a sketchy place, and I kind of steer away from Cra Craigslist now that I know that Facebook Marketplace exists. Anyway, guys, that was it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any more specific questions, just Leave me a comment down below, send, shoot me an email, but more than likely, if you guys are going to use Facebook or Craigslist, just be safe. If a, if a deal is too good to be true, that's because it probably is. Use common sense when you're meeting a stranger and use all of that stuff. Meet maybe at a police station, meet somewhere public, that, those are all my recommendations. Thanks for watching the video, guys. Catch you on the next one.